This is what the threshold and ratio controls in a compressor do. They tell the compressor, all right, when the order goes above this level, the threshold level, trim it by this amount. That's called ratio. Don't let it pass entirely, just a fraction. By the way, I'm Talis, pop music producer, and this video is episode two of our series on audio compression for beginners. Here's episode one in case you missed it. The intensity of sound is measured in decibels. Some compressors call it volume, gain, and some call it amplitude. I'll use them as synonyms here. So the threshold is like a volume ceiling. Any audio that goes higher than this threshold line gets reduced. Any audio below the ceiling you chose will remain the same. If you want to squeeze the dynamic range, the variation in volume of any audio source for the reasons we've covered in episode one, if you want to compress your vocals or a guitar whenever it goes over negative 10 decibels, you set up your threshold to negative 10 decibels. I'll use the Nutrient Compressor to show you what I'm saying because it has a nice visual representation of what's going on with the audio. I'm running a simple sine wave through the compressor in this example. Now, how much reduction do you want? Well, I want to reduce half of the signal that goes above this negative 10 decibels threshold. So I should use a ratio of two to one. For every two decibels that get in, only one decibel gets out on the other side. For example, this sound is peaking at eight decibels above my threshold. So right here on this gray line at negative two decibels. With a ratio of two to one, I'm taking those eight decibels that were above my threshold line and now I'm getting rid of four decibels and letting the other four decibels pass. Therefore, the output signal is peaking at negative six decibels instead of negative two because we got rid of half of the signal above the threshold. If I wanted to trim even more, I could increase the ratio. If I had, for example, a ratio of eight to one, that means for every eight decibels above the threshold, only one will pass the compressor and the rest will be trimmed. If that sound is peaking at eight decibels above my threshold and I have a compressor with a ratio of eight to one, it's going to take those eight decibels, divide them by eight, which is the ratio, and only preserve one decibel. The other seven will never make it through the compressor. Therefore, our sine wave is now leaving the compressor at negative nine decibels, only one decibel above our threshold line. A ratio of four to one means we'll keep one fourth of our decibels that cross the threshold line. A ratio of five to one means the compressor will keep one fifth of the decibels above that threshold ceiling. If your ratio is one to one, nothing's going to get compressed because for every one decibel above the threshold, the compressor will in turn let one decibel pass. So no compression. Input and output levels will be the same. On the other hand, some compressors allow for very high ratios, like 30, sometimes even infinite ratios. A compressor set up like that will barely let any signal pass above the threshold level, much like a limiter does. But remember, even with a ratio of 100 to 1, if your audio signal is not hitting the threshold level when it gets to the compressor, nothing will happen. It won't be enough to trigger the compressor. Hey, can you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss the next videos? All right, so how should you configure your compressor? Well, there isn't a specific ratio for a certain application, nor there is a recommended threshold level. There's only a guideline because it all depends on your audio source. For general compression, to preserve more of the original dynamics, use lower ratios. For more extreme compression, higher ratios, which can suck the life out of a vocal performance if overdone, but sometimes you need extreme compression to tame a performance that's all over the place in terms of being quiet then loud then quiet again. And sometimes you need no compression at all, it totally depends on the recorded performance. The best thing you can do is experience compression. Now that you're aware of what these controls do, start compressing stuff and listen to the results and the different sounds you'll get with each setting. It may take you some time to actually start hearing compression. It's a bit of a challenge at first, but nothing beats experience. Just gotta do it over and over again until it clicks. And when it sounds right, it's right. In the next episode, we'll factor in the time element. We'll learn how to use the attack and release controls to get more precise with your compression. Subscribe. Subscribe. Subscribe.